Dunkin' Donuts. Um, board members are Richard Novak, Jonathan Fitch, Ron Stefik. I think, Jeannie, we have only the one item tonight. And if I can just set the table legally, um, the petitioner came before us with three, re three requests. One was for a finding that uh, rebuilding the building in essentially its current location, which was within the setback, um, was not substantially uh, more detrimental to the neighborhood under 1.4.6. We also had to give the petitioner a special permit, or he re requested a special permit to relocate <clears throat> his drive up window from the current location to the proposed new location. And we granted both of those uh, last time. Uh, and the we restaurant. left open, sorry? And the restaurant? Uh, and the restaurant use, I think that's right. Uh, we granted that as well. So the one thing we left open was the, um, the approval of the sign, the sign on, on, the, new, on the new building. Um, and we continued that. And since then the planning board had two hearings and uh, voted on a decision that I've reviewed a draft of, Mr. Owens. Um, and it sounds like in your decision, there was a uh, agreement on a sign, but I, I guess I'll let this petitioner speak to that. Is, is that, does that cover the background? Did I miss anything? Okay, hearing none. All right, is there anyone here to speak for the petitioner tonight? Yes, uh, for the record, my name is Brandon Barry with Bowler. We're the civil engineers for the project. I'm also joined by Alex Weatherall, who's the owner and applicant. Um, that was a, a very good synopsis of where we've been so far uh, and what had happened at the previous hearing and what has happened with the, the planning board. Um, since we've last met with you, we, as you mentioned, we met with the planning board, discussed the project with them, um, and have reviewed the request uh, for the gold and black sign that you, you made at the last hearing with Duncan uh, and the architect and come up with revised elevations, which I provided to Jeannie. Um, and if you will allow me, I can share my screen to, to review those with the board as well at this time. Please do. Board members, did you get that in advance? I think Jeannie sent it around yesterday or today. Yes. Yes, I did. Great. <clears throat> Okay. And can everyone see my screen here? Yes, yes. thank okay. you. Um, so I'm gonna focus mainly on the west and north elevations, uh, west being the front, the front of the building that faces South Main Street and north being um, the side of the building where the drive-through window is. Um, so on the front side of the building, we've revised the orange and pink Duncan sign to just the, to a sign that still says Duncan, but is now in gold lettering on a black background. Um, the sign itself is 23.75 square feet. Uh, which matches the size of the previous Duncan sign that we had. That's the overall sign area, including the black background. The lettering itself is only 12.75 feet. Uh, so we reduced the word mark that we had previously that was just a standalone Duncan by about 50%, uh, but providing the black border, we are still at about the same sign area, uh, but the lettering and advertising portion of the sign is about 50% reduced. Um, for the West <laughs> And then this sign also on the elevations, you can see there's some LED up lighting for the sign. So it's all externally illuminated. There's no internal illumination of this sign, uh, just be up lighting below the sign itself. Um, on the Northern face, again, this sign used to be orange and pink, the, the Duncan branding colors. We've removed that to be uh, golden black as requested. The area of the sign is about 25.5 square feet. Uh, and the lettering is about 18.5. The lettering on this side did not change uh, significantly. It, it matches what was shown. So the addition is just the black background to kind of stand out with the sign. Um, I believe those were the requests that were made. I don't know if there's any other details you'd like on the signage. Uh, again, similar to the one on the front, this one on the north will be externally illuminated, not internally. Um, and I think those were, were the requests that the board had made in the comments. So I, I can certainly answer any other questions or, or speak to anything else on the signage if you would like. Oh, I think you might be muted. No, I... You did it again. Despite what you show on the plan, uh, these will be downlit, not uplit. We can do, we can have that revised to be downlighting, of course. Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm just looking at the uh, My other laptop has come back to life. I have to kill it. Yeah, that should be better. Okay. Um, other board members, 
questions, comments? How do you feel about this? You, you, two, you two are the ones who were troubled by the sign, so I'll let you lead the commentary. Uh, from my point of view, it's a big improvement. And uh, I, I find it to be acceptable. That's my feeling also. <clears throat> okay. Um, Thank you. Sorry, Jonathan. I just was uh, thanking the applicant for making that change. I think it's an improvement. Happy to be a, a good member of the town. Um, all right. That, Any was never in doubt. that was never in doubt. <laughs> um, any commentary from any member of the public on the revised signage, which is the subject of, that's before us right now? I can't tell if someone's trying to speak up if there's, or if there's background. Uh, I was I just curious, uh, Chris, did, has the planning board actually approved this, uh, this sign as it's presented here? Yes, we were in favor of it, Ron. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, I guess while we're still on the board members, I, I do have a question about the existing signage, uh, including the, the signage for Dunkin' Donuts on the ground sign. We, a year ago, approved, uh, renewed an existing special permit for a sign that was based on uh, prior decisions, including 21504, which has got a, as amended, which has got the, uh, Sitco sign that was to replace the old sign. And that's that's what we approved. At this point, there is quite a bit more uh, signage on the ground sign. There's a Dunkin' Donut sign, there's a there's a sign for the bank. Uh, and those those uh, those signs, at least as far as I understand it, have not been approved by the ZBA. So whatever, whatever actions we take, I would want some uh, remediation or clarification of what's there. And uh, what, what the plan is. I mean, uh, uh, well, it, it seems, I, I think I think you're right on the facts, Jonathan, and it seems um, having not discussed this with the, the building inspector or anybody, I think their legal status is they're probably technically out of compliance on their pedestal sign and should come back in to have that special permit amended to catch it up with the facts. Okay. That, that sounds right to me. Yeah. Well, the, I, um, the I don't know the specifics of the permit or the, the freestanding sign, but that's certainly something that we can we can review with the applicant and owner, uh, discuss with right. the building inspector and determine the, the proper course of action. Um, we are I'm not proposing any changes to that sign as part of this project, but um, can can certainly add that to our list of items to, to look at. Right, right. We, we, we get it that you may be surprised by this. Um, okay, other commentary on uh, the signage, uh, any member of the public, any board member, anybody? I'm just, a, you know, Rick, if I could have some clarification on what, what you know, what would the board like with respect to the street sign? You I mean I, the, the, the big pedestal sign, Alex? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm, 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 I'm looking at the other board members as I'm saying this, but I think it's a matter of coming in and asking to amend your prior special permit to say, we're not going to say Sherburn fuels and have, uh, uh, have lit uh, prices for gas, which is I think what you asked for last time, 
but we're also going to add Dunkin' Donuts uh, below them in the in, in the bank. Uh, I, th I think that's all that's on there. I haven't I haven't really vetted it carefully. Jonathan, is there something else on there? Um, I think that that's that's it. It's obviously quite a bit larger, and the need for Dunkin' Donuts signage, I think, is well. Can comment when he, when when Alex comes back, but we've got uh, approved signage on this new building. I, um, so, yeah, I'd be. I, that's kind of what I was getting at. Is I'd be happy to take the Duncan off the uh, pedestal sign. In fact, I'd kind of like to. Well, I, I I don't want to get into your relationship with Duncans, but probably that would be that would be uh, appealing from the board standpoint if Duncans could tolerate it. Yeah, I think I just tell Duncan it's going to happen. Yeah. I just, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I think it, I have, aesthetically, I'm, a, I'm, I'm completely aligned with Jonathan. I'd like to, I'd like to take that off and, and I'd like to take the space myself and I, whatever direction I can have so I know I can get approval, I, I will certainly take. Well, um, Jonathan, what do you, uh, you know, we're just uh, brainstorming here a little bit, Jonathan and, and Ron. I, I was thinking that we, what we might do is if, if we voted to do, approve this sign on the build these two signs on the built on the new building we might make a condition that they promptly uh apply for an amendment to the um to the pedestal sign to bring it into compliance and i was going to leave it that relatively vague because they could comply a couple of different ways they could take things off it they could do this they could do that um well, there, could, there is yeah there is the large sign also for the middlesex bank right yeah well, uh, uh, this is... the comment I would make on the middle set uh, sign is that typically uh, when we have signs such as this in other locations in town, there's a uniformity of the size of the sign. In other words, each sign is not a different size. You know, there's generally a major sign and then, you know, secondary signs below it. And they're generally all the same size. So it has a kind of a uniform look to it. Right. So in, this that, case, that, in this case, the Middlesex sign is quite different from the Duncan sign. I do know, this is Laura um, speaking. I do know that Middlesex sign went through an approval process. Okay. So you know, yeah. earlier, and it probably was just when that was done before the switch to the Sherborne uh, fuel name. So right. it, there's old paperwork. So each of those additions have have approval processes in the past. It probably just it wasn't all united. But anyway, right. uh, no, it, and that's an excellent point. And that's one of the reasons why I was suggesting the language that it be brought into compliance because I don't know the answer right now on, on what's in compliance or out of compliance on it. We'll have to look at the paperwork and figure it out. Is does anyone on the board know? Can anyone on the board? I'm just curious. What is on What is non-compliant? I, I we'll do oh. whatever. Yeah. Oh, sure. Let's say the, um, I'll, I'll give a good example. Let's say when we approved Sherburn Fuel, that change to, to, to make it lit and be Sherburn Fuel, not Sherburn Sitco. And let's say at the same time, we also said you could have Middlesex Savings Bank. But then Dunkin' Donuts was put up later and it was essentially an extension of the sign, making the sign larger. That would be out of compliance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to bring that into compliance, you either have to make the sign the size it was before or get an amendment to the special permit okay. to have the sign be larger. That's that's all I mean. I'm not trying yeah. to be cute. No, no, it's fine. I mean, by virtue of putting a, a new building sign on a new Duncan building, does that make the this, this pedestal sign out of compliance because it's a duplicate? No, 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 no. The, the, the pedestal signs uh, compliance is, is solely a matter of the pedestal sign. They're not, uh, it, it's a good question, but um, they're not fungible. The signs don't move around on the site from a zoning standpoint. Right. I see what you're thinking, but that isn't the way the zoning works. Um, so, other thoughts, commentary on the signs, pedestal or otherwise? Otherwise would be, um, I had mentioned this to Alex before, he had a problem with the uh, clearance at the canopy. And so he put up uh, some sign, some warning signs, and uh, the uh, 
the historic uh, district commission felt that those signs were perhaps a larger and uh, more noticeable than they needed to be. And uh, what we discussed was uh, we wondered if the sign uh, could be changed to be pretty much like the sign you have at the pass window right now, just says, you know which one I'm talking about? It's the eight foot six clearance as you, the, as you approach the-, the White window. background with some black lettering, with pretty, pretty- Black lettering on a white background and a little, yeah. you know, it's a little more discreet. And then maybe it were mount, mounted about a foot or two inboard of the edge. It, I think it would still be quite functional, but uh, wouldn't be quite so obtrusive. We can we can certainly look at that. And obviously, with the canopy being moved, you know where it is today. It's the clearance bar has to be very close to the canopy, which is you know right on the side of that building. We have a little bit more flexibility in the location to to maybe put it in a more subtle location as well. So. Uh, Brandon, we're talking we're talking about the the canopy over the gas pumps, the central uh, the central bay. You know, it's not it's 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 un, it's not a standard height, so I put a big warning sign. R what Ron is suggesting is not inappropriate. The sign I put, you know, very intentionally is is impossible to miss. I think what Ron is saying is, gee, Alex, we think you know he may well be right. He's probably right. We 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 think you could achieve achieve the same warning impact with a slightly less obnoxious sign in terms of dimensions. Yeah, I mean, there are many canopies I've seen with, you know, much smaller signs. And some that I would say are too small, but uh, I don't know if there's, uh, if there's, if they're, they, they probably have to be there for legal reasons. I'll, um, what I can, if, if it's okay, Ron, I, and I, I what I'll do is I, I have an, very responsive sign company in Southern New Hampshire. I will, I'll call them back and see if they can create a bit of a schematic drawing and if it's okay with you running past you. And it's just, it's hard, you know, it's hard to know what it's gonna look like. And, and, you know, it's easy to sort of downscale the dimension but not exactly be sure what it's gonna look like but I'll, I'll yeah. get to work on it if that's okay. That's, that's fine. And, and, and Ron, Unless you and Jonathan talk me into it, I don't think the uh, the the what I'll call Storo Drive warning sign on the on the canopy uh, is is under our jurisdiction under this no, I, I special don't permit it. that's ahead of us. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I'm sympathetic with Alex because it's uh, hard to come up with something that uh, you know will overcome human stupidity. It's a powerful <laughs> force. <laughs> What it, was, what it was was Rick. It was the uh, the Stanley Tree Service that's been doing an awful lot of work. They got their boom box stuck. Yeah. And I said yeah. to him, I said, he says, Alex, whatever you need, uh, I'll pay for it. I said, really, it was just some scratch paint. It was my fault to not warn you guys. So it, that ended that ended fairly happily. But it was, you know, yeah. I think Ron, Ron's making a nice point. I can I can downsize it. It's gonna it'll take me some weeks, but I can certainly get it done. I just want to have someone to bounce the the new protect, protective scale off because I don't want to make it too small, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, Mr. Fitch, do you feel like making a making a motion here, unless there's further discussion of the sign? Sure. <clears throat> I, I move that uh, the application of uh, Alexander Weatherall for a special permit uh, under section 5.2.3 and 5.2.7 uh, to uh, use uh, signage as shown on the plan submitted today be um, approved subject to the condition that the applicant provide uh, requested the requested information regarding uh, the status of his existing crown sign. Would, would you take a friendly amendment uh, subject to the condition that the uh, applicant promptly uh, uh, apply to uh, bring the 
existing pedestal, pedestal sign into compliance. Sure, that's better. That way, that way, he gets he has a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Okay, um, and I think I I'd also suggest another friendly amendment that the um, sign be downlit in accordance with the planning board decision, as opposed to uplit as indicated on the plans. All right, did I miss anything? Going once, going twice. Okay. Um, further discussion from the. Oh, we, I guess we need a second. I'll second it. Um, any further? I have, discussion? I have a discussion item. Sure. Uh, is there a reason uh, that it that the planning board wanted the downlighting rather than the uplighting? Mr. Owen. Um, I don't know. There was no discussion other than that's what was talked about because i think the light source on the uplighting is is not noticeable at all and if you light it from overhead i'm a little worried about some glare from the lighting um i think the concern would was the dark skies right that, that that's where all of our all of our uh, downlighting uh suggestions and and narrative is coming from these days are are dark skies people Oh, okay. All right. Which is not to say they're right or wrong. It's just that that's where it's going. No, no. Okay. Oh, well, that is the point. Yeah, I, I, I didn't uh, didn't pick that up. Okay. Um, further discussion. All right. All in favor, say aye. We have to do this by roll call. Novak votes aye. Stefik aye. Fitch aye. Okay, Mr. Weatherall, you have your permit. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your thank time. You. Mr. Barrett, thank Mr. you Barrett, all thank very you. much. Thank you right. for being so patient with me. <laughs> all right. You're being, you're being patient with us too. Um, <laughs> do we have any further business, Jeannie? And uh, should we set another hearing date for do we, what, what's coming at us? Um, we don't have anything probably until no November. The only thing um, out <laughs> Sorry. or could be December. Alex, do you have the hours for the Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, the hours for the Dunkin' Donuts, that, it's an excellent point. The hours for the Dunkin' Donuts, 4.30 to 9.30 Monday through Saturday, 4.30 to 8.30 on Sundays. Uh, I'm reading from the draft planning board decision as I read that. So I'm assuming that's acceptable to everybody. Um, we, could, we could adopt that as a condition. And I'm assuming that when they're not open, Mr. Weatherall, the lights don't have, you know, the signs are not lit. To be off. Right. I, I don't know this to be true, except through just observing other locations. This, the reality is when Duncan is a tenant to a convenience store situation, it's almost a corporate rule that they essentially mimic the opening hours of, this, of the store. It wouldn't surprise me at all, although I can't, I don't know, and I don't have insight. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the hours are actually reduced when they have their own building. But there's no reason we wouldn't turn, they wouldn't turn the lights on when they go, off when they go. All right. All right, so, so, so we'll, we'll ape the planning board for operating hours no longer than those ones I described. And, and we'll require that the lights be off when they're not open. How's that? That's good. Mr. Fitch, Mr. Stefik, you adopt those as, as amendments? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Any other smart questions from Jeannie Guthrie? No. That's You're sure? <laughs> Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're not setting a new he another hearing date. No. Oh, that's that's awesome. Um, well, then I'd entertain a motion to adjourn unless people want to sit around chatting, which they, I hope they don't. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss our time together. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll come in to buy gas. Out. We'll still see each other. <laughs> All right. And you have to come back. <laughs> you have to come back to your pedestal. We have to fix that. Yeah. Good point. Good point. All right. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. Done. Okay. All in favor, aye. Novak votes aye. Stefik, aye. Pitch, aye. Aye, aye. Good night. Thank you Good all. Night, everyone.
Bye. Bye.